Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dyslexia Life Act Show. I'm your host, Matthew Head, and in this episode, I'm talking to Jason Flintler. He's a brand builder and has been doing this since 1996 with his own company, The Flint. He's also a writer and has recently released the book From Bland to Brand that is a culmination of his experience over the years. He's a keynote speaker and supports entrepreneurs, startups, and small and medium enterprises. I will put links to Jason's company as well as some other things we talk about in the show notes, which will be available at dyslexialifehacks.com forward slash podcast. Welcome to the show, Jason. Thank you very much. I suddenly feel very nervous now. That sounds all very professional. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I've done that intro a number of times. It was today. very smooth. It was very smooth. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> That's okay. Where, where I uh, thought I'd start this off is really diving into your background in graphic design and where the interest okay. of that started from. Uh, well, I, I, I guess the interest started when I was reading red comics. I think mm. I think that would have been it. I would, was really interested in comics. I wasn't interested. I mean, I guess it was the visual side of the comics that I really enjoyed. Um, wasn't very too much to read, so that was good. Um, and I'm a very, I mean, I, I now realise I'm a very visual-led uh, person. Yes. Um, so, uh, and then from that, I would then copy those comics in terms of kind of just drawing, saying, you know, how do I, how does, how do you draw Superman or Batman or Spider-Man? Um, and that then progressed in doing my own comics and designing my own superheroes. And, and oh, then, wow. then the old, the, 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 that sounds better than it was. <laughs> 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 um, it was kept very much in my bedroom. I didn't, it, didn't, it didn't go any further than that. Um, I may have made my own costumes as well, but that, that's, that's, that's another story. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, so I would do my own comics. And, and that kind of led into... In, in, into school and I think most of the class kind of realised that I was the arty bloke and I was kind of I was kind of good at comics and kind of good at cartooning um, I think that I, I, I sort of mentioned that in my book um, I kind of kind of knew where I was in the pecking order in class if you if I mean if, you, if everyone goes back to their class they kind of kind of know where they were yeah, yeah. In, in that you know you could you could fit yourself okay I was I was about number 17 out of 34 or whatever but yeah I was good at I was good at being a goalie I was definitely good at doing art and cartoons and uh, a bit of top trumps everything else I wasn't that good at <laughs> but that's probably where it started in in those days it was called uh, it was called commercial artist I don't, oh. think even, I don't think even the word graphic designer I wasn't familiar with the term graphic designer so this is when I was, you know, this is like eight, nine, ten. So um, this is, you know, 73, 74, 75. Even at that age, I kind of wanted to be a commercial artist, w w whatever that meant to an eight-year-old. Yes. And how did you then try and step through the school system to achieve um, that kind of goal? What was, did you manage to plan it out? Or was it like you stumbled into the uni course at the end of it all? <laughs> I, I, yeah, no, I do, I do think that, that well, there, was, there was stumbling and a little bit direction I obviously keen on arts and energy in, in the O levels. I, you know, I did art. Um, mm -hmm. I did art, technical drawing, and another o, new o, o, new O level. Uh, um, the year I did it, I have no idea when. Eighty one um, was was a design O level. And that, that was the first year. I know I was my year was the first people to do that. I also took an art a year earlier okay. and got that. Um, I think again the school just wanted to. Do, see if I could. I mean, it was more of a reflection on the school. Obviously, the school would, could be proud of having pupils that would pass their levels a year earlier than they should, so they sort of tried me out on that. Um, uh, so, yeah, that, I, mean, I mean, I was I was kind of picked to do the school murals and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and that carried, so, that, yeah, so I did that. And then come the O-levels, it was kind of, well, what are you going to do now? And I go, well, I, I presume I should do A-levels. So I wanted to do art, technical drawing, and mm. and uh, design, and they wouldn't let you do that in, back in my day. No, you, no, you you in in those days, you weren't allowed to do subjects that would help each other because <laughs> you had more because you had more chance of passing. <laughs> yeah, so where is the logic in that? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Well, that was in the back in the days where you didn't have school tables and you didn't have to perform. The school didn't have to perform, I guess. Um, right. So I said, okay. no, you, can do, you can do one of those three, but you can't do all of them. 
Oh, so I okay. did art, and they go, so what else are you good at? So I, <laughs> I enjoyed physics at the time, mm. so I took that. And my dad said, well, in case you in case you run your own business, you might as well do business studies. And I go, you know, sounds, I can't do that. Um, so that happened. Um, and again, after that, it's like, well, what do you, what do, you do after a levels? Well, you, you do a degree, I suppose. And so it's a bit more, it, yeah, the route was a bit more like that. It, I don't think there was a massive plan. It was just, okay, well, what next? Yeah. Um, <laughs> really, that, that's kind of how it went. It turns out that to do a degree, you have to do an extra year called a foundation course, mm-hmm. uh, which I did in local um, Bournemouth, uh, Bournemouth and Paul College of Art and Design. Um, a place called Shirley Park, and that was that's just my best year in terms of that. It was 1984, so it was just, just it's just the greatest year ever. It is a good year. Yeah, oh, such a good year. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I did a year there, and then went to Bristol uh, Polytechnic. We didn't have universities back in the, again back in 1984. Yeah, Univers- yeah. Universities didn't do art. It, um, so Polytechnics did all the arty, crafty stuff. So. Um, did a, did a degree there, so yeah, it was, it was a it, yes. I'd, I'd like to think it was a plan, but it was a more like, oh, I guess I better, I better do the next thing. Yes, yeah, I kind of enjoyed that. <laughs> I'll just find the next line through to. to yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't trying to put off going to work. It's just, um, <laughs> I think, I think in those days it was, it was, it was deemed useful to have a degree. I'm not so sure these days. Yeah, um, so. You would have spilled out of the university with the degree in, well, in graphic, graphic design. In graphic, so it's called graphic design by that. Point. By that time, yes, the word commercial right. art had right. gone. Well, like, yeah. I know about eight, but even by 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 by, I was doing O levels. It wasn't commercial art; it was still graphic design by then. Ah, yeah. okay. And then, did you go straight into design work after that, or had you did you find a job in something else first? Uh, no, I mean, I I did get into 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 sort of kind of graphics. Um, uh, I think luckily for me, uh, I, I actually concentrated on trying to play with computers at, at, at the end of 1987, or about mm-hmm. 86, 87. Uh, a huge mainframe system in, in, in Polytechnic. I, I don't think even we, there wasn't even a Mac 2 back then. Um, so there's <laughs> apricots and mainframe systems, and, li- and it, it would literally take me a day to draw a circle. On this computer, because you had to, you had to type in all the coordinates, all the, all the vertices oh, of, right. of the circle, and you yeah, just yeah. T- type in going I don't know, 0.75 that way and 1.85 that way, and it it will do that. <laughs> and then another half an hour to color it in or something, and then I designed typefaces on, on these computers. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, which was yeah. I mean, in 1986, it was it was quite <laughs> quite leading edge. Um, and on my degree show, uh, a local company spotted those things. And I, I know it was me and, and Garfield. Um, we were the only two that were dabbling computers out of the whole of the our year. And this computer company, computer graphics company. So again, in 1987, it was, it was mm. kind of unheard of. Um, but uh, it was the start of what was called business presentation. So you got PowerPoint today. Well, back yeah. in 1987, uh, business graphics presentations were done using 35 millimeter slides. Yes, yes, um, in, in the old circle. Yeah, project, in the old carousel. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it. and and it would produce huge. So every you know, a, a, a business AGM or something would then show their yearly projections, and they want to use pie charts and bar charts and all that sort of stuff, and some text slides and some some pictures or whatever. So this was the time where all that was now done on a computer. So we get the data in. Uh, type in the year's projections and, and then these little bar charts would appear on, on this computer. In those days, they were called, um, what they called starbursts, these computers. And these were, uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to exaggerate, were £100,000 for these computers. Um, in this company, um, there's a big processing, photographic processing company in Bristol called CPL, Color Processing Labs. And it was a little, they decided to get into that market, little company. And it was me, it was the boss, Dave, and, and another Dave Bridge, who's a senior designer, and I was a junior, junior designer. And so we just uh, produced these slides. 
Um, and so I got to really understand those computers. And and this was before Photoshop and anything like that. And uh, yeah, that's so I cut my teeth on then learning that world because in, in Poly, we had learned all the traditional methods of, of graphic design. So we were course, so yes. we didn't use computers. Yes, yes. We used drawing boards, parallel motion, rotoring pens, cow gum, bromides, um, you know, writing the words and sending them off to a typeset. If we would go and set them and print it out, and then you take the typesetting back and you'd have to cut all, cut all these words out stick them down onto paper, and then you take a big photograph of it and uh, and then uh, uh-huh. send it off to a printer. So it was all totally analog and manual. And when we left, along with Fleet Street, who then just swapped over to from hot, met, hot metal to computers, and they all, they all went on strike because of it, <laughs> um, that was the year I left. So oh, it was like, yeah, overnight, I, just, I had to basically learn all over again. Um, uh, yeah. you, but to learn the, the implements of that, of that trade. Yes. L- luckily, the Polytechnic taught us how to use our brain and how to solve design problems. Yeah. Um, we just need to use different tools to then get it printed, basically. Yeah. yeah. You, one thing I want to get to is... Um, how did you find out you're dyslexic? Because it sounds like actually lear- relearning the tools to use a computer, being computers when they were just about to become a big thing. Yeah. Do you find that give you an advantage in terms of learning that quicker? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, again, as I said, I, I was lucky where I was. Uh, I was dabbling on the mainframe computer at at, at Poly, mm. and whether that gave me an uh, an edge, or certainly it enabled me to get the job. Yes. <laughs> um, so that was so that was really lucky because um, it wasn't you know that wasn't again I didn't plan that <laughs> um, just I just yeah and I and you know talking about things like this because I you know I would never I've never had this discussion but and had that question mm-hmm. um, trying to think back as to why why that why that why I got attracted to working on these computers. Why, why, why did that attract me? Why did I like designing typefaces on the computer rather than drawing it out? I don't know. It is an um, interesting one, the typeface stuff, because you'd think being dyslexic, the designing typefaces would either be really beneficial because the words that flip for you and are uncomfortable, yeah. you steer away from and you start designing typefaces that work for you by extension and work for everybody else. Uh, <laughs> maybe, yeah. I mean, the the... the <laughs> You see, the thing that I, I we'll probably get into it later, but the the mm. the, the realization that there's there's something about me that's dyslexic. I mean, I'm not, I, you know, everyone has varying degrees of dyslexia, mm. so I don't know how I don't I couldn't tell you how dyslexic I am. Mm. I yeah, I don't, I don't know. I know I, I now know it runs in our family, uh, and as I've said to you, you know, my, my my father was uh, was part of it was running the Dorset Dyslexia Association, my sister's dyslexic and all that was that was all discovered. With me, it was it was it wasn't it wasn't diagnosed. Um so it, it's it only I would say about yeah, I would say about ten years ago is um as you know uh, acceptance of it and, and and far more discussion about it, you go, oh well that that's that's what as happens to me, um, but you just you just but by but 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 by the time I'm forty, you've kind of learned to deal with it. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. and and it's mainly been you, you. You sort of say to yourself, "Well, you just can't spell, Jason. That's just that. But just just accept that you're just not good at spelling." You go fine, okay, and I, and and you and you know I've I've realised I I not I can't I'm not very good at reading. Mm-hmm. But that, when we again, that might mean something different to different people. And then you just, you just these these little, little cogs like fill it starts all you know um, all fitting in you know, into place, and the jigsaw piece comes together, and you go, oh, that's why I prefer comics than books. Oh, that's why I can't <laughs> read that. That's why I can't spell. Uh, blah blah. And you did these all things slowly dawned on me over the past sort of fifteen to ten years. It was a bit weird. So, um, but I, but. I'm I'm really fascinated with language. Right. Um, oh, yeah. I, I love wordplay, 
And that's very separate to, okay, every now and then there's a word I go, I, I, I don't know what that says. Or my wife will go, can you not see that you spelt that wrong? And I'm going, nope. nope. <laughs> it looks fine to me. Mm. I can't see any other way of spelling that. Um, or it looked fine to me when I last looked at it. I appreciate now when I look at it, it's, it reads yeah. something different. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but, um, but at the time, <laughs> it was fine. Mm, mm. Um, or at the spit second I saw it, it was fine. You know, suddenly I just suddenly, they're just, you know, you just see, I just see words like, God, because of the last two years. Now I, now I see the word, what do I see the word as? Um, vacancies. All I see is vaccines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, you just muddle the whole thing up. Yeah, I mean, again, <laughs> I, 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 I can only sort of say how I see words. Mm. And they just, they just, they just, very quickly go, they go, and the words, the little letters just quickly move around. <laughs> uh, and then they, they stay and then they might move again. Yeah. And you go, yes. what? Okay, well, that was, that said, that said metal a minute ago or a spit second ago. And now it says meal. It's like, well, there was a T in there a second ago. <laughs> and the words tend to do that for me. Um, which is kind of weird. So, but I don't know. I, I don't know whether that's weird or not. Maybe that's just absolutely no, normal. No, no that I is a, a, it's a dyslexic trait to be able to. You tend to think in three D and render everything as a three D image in your head. But they, right. the prob problem out with letters on a page is that they can flip around, turn around, go inside out and backwards as your brain sort of does the matrix style three D turn around, which is why you can end up with the as you put it, <laughs> all the words turn around and upside down and yeah. You yeah. imagine, well, kind of my experience is you, you see the word, sometimes you don't read, you'll read the word, but you read sort of the end and the beginning of it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I mean, yes, I've, I, I've seen th those posts and they go, if you can read this, you're a, you know, you're a genius or something. You're going, what do you mean? That's, that's yeah. how I read. That's <laughs> yeah. long as the, the beginning and the end, yeah. roughly what I'm used to seeing as, as a symbol. Yeah. Um, then you can kind of, I think, I'd assume most people can get through that. But the fact these words are totally mixed up is that's, yeah, basically how, on occasion, mm, mm. But I, that's how I would see it. And I just going, that's probably that word, that's probably that word, that's probably that word. And you just get through it. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's always, and, and, but, you know, having not, having, having, a that not being diagnosed for you know, when I was a kid, mm. it and admittedly, and it, and it has, and it really has had no impact on me because mm. I just it's just all right. It's like well, anything. I just happen to like a music, a certain type of music, because mm. but someone else won't. Well, that's just life. You just all have different views and different perspectives and everything. I, I kind of I kind of understand that. So it was never it's never really a massive problem for me. And and so and and so yeah, but uh, but and I I think I've separated the idea. Well, I, I know I can't spell and words that words that weird every now and then, but I separate that completely from I really love wordplay, mm. and I really mm. love. Um, I mean, I I'm, I'm also a songwriter, so I really love writing lyrics. Um, I've done that for a long time. So the fact that I can't that that. that uh, yeah, the, the 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 spelling of it, or writing down a word, and it it, it, it might looking a bit weird every now and then. Uh, I, that's quite for me. I can e easily separate that out because how I know. Do you, what how do you find the word play? Because I really struggle with it. If I'm reading something with word play, and it's kind of amusing, but I struggle to do it myself. So how how is the process for you? Um. Uh, well. Um. I guess I can only put it in. It's more of a uh, what, what's what's the word play? Uh, it's more as a challenge or a puzzle that I like to give myself. So let's okay. say, well, there, it'd be, so in my professional experience, and certainly in, in, in branding, you know, my my job is to come up with, with company names. So that's so that's that's a real massive word play thing I've got to sort out. Um, uh, obviously, got to do a logo, but the next thing I got, got to do is come up with a company strap line. So out of the three things I've got to do, two of them are word play. Uh, so, you know, 66% of my job is, is to deal with words. 
And so, but then on the lyric side of things as well, I guess the task that I, li- I like to set myself is, it is dealing with things like, take a, a, an idiom. If you've, got, if you've got a subject, you go, well, the first thing I do is look up, look up all the idioms to do with that subject. Yes, yes. Because um, again, I, I just, I, I'm sure it's the same in every language. <laughs> but I'll pick two subjects, say for, for a company, um, uh, and no matter what those two, uh, let me let me think of um, a company that we've done some work for recently. Let's say I, a mattress company called Zest Rest. Um, so, uh, so my task then is go right. I've got to think of something. <laughs> So we've already got the word zest because we were talking about, about you know um, being a bit more alive after an after good night's sleep, um, and then again trying to think of the words. I mean, I, I came up with I, I think about hundred hundred different names of this company, um, and then, but but the brief helps us. So so we end up with zest. Definitely one of that thing. Obviously, so I like lo- rhyming's good. So rest was good. It's great that the word rest rhymes with zest because sleeping is about getting restful. So that's great. Um, but then I've now got to think of a strap line as well to help sum that, those two words up as well. So we come up with, with wake up refreshed. Just rest, wake up refreshed. So uh-huh. it's like it, it scans, <laughs> it's got some rhythm to it, it rhymes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The word refreshed uh, bring, you know, adds on to the word zest and rest. And it's like, I've only got, I got some all this, you know, I got some up a name of a company and the slogan in five words. And they've all got to kind of work together. But you know, that took a couple of days. Um, that's just one. I mean, that's, that's one of many yeah. things. But it, it's kind of, okay, you say so you go to the idioms and what, what do you find with, with zest and you find all these things out and what do you find with waking up? And, you, and, it, and it always seems to me that, and I guess I, and I, I, I do assume it works with every other language, but just um, no matter what the puzzle is, the English language will always have a word that's a double meaning. And, it, and you'll find one word out of a thousand that will mean will, will mean or have a double meaning of the two things you want to bring together. And it's just finding that link. It's it's that puzzle I love solving. Mm. Um and to try and, and not to not to use the same word twice. I know and it's the same in lyrics. I can't stand it when you, like, the same word appears. Um, there's actually a, some software that you put so, put songs into and it tells you where you've repeated it. Because it's hard to see, read all, it tells you where you repeat a word. You go, oh, I've got to find another synonym for uh, a, a, a word. And, that, and that, again, that's what I like. So, you know, we were doing, we've just done a whole album on um, on um, seasons with a, with a girl. And it's like, we've got 16 songs here and we've got to talk about seasons. And it's like, you know, by by song two, you've, you've done every single cinema you possibly have for <laughs> the word winter. Um, yes. But you've got another fourteen songs to go, um, so uh, yeah, it's so uh, maybe in answer to your question, it, it's giving yourself, giving myself that puzzle and that and that, that to solve, and to try and get use these words that have double meanings or they're they're within an idiom somewhere, and you go ah right, that that I could I could use that, um, or if we're going to use the word jump. Yeah, you know, or, or opposites as well. We quite like doing opposites. So if we're going to use the word up in one line, we've got to use the word down for the next one. Um, um, or if we're going to use the word fast, we've got to use the word slow. Uh, so, but how do we do that, and how does it make sense? So it's just, it's just, yeah. It's rather than doing the crossword, I guess, that's laid out in front of you. I just create my own puzzles no, with, with lyric writing and just say, right, come on, you've got to solve this. Um, and it's got to make sense, and then, but also yeah. it's got a rhyme. It's also yeah. got a scan. It's got to fit with a melody. Um, so there's loads, loads of levels at which these words are got right. So you've got to really sculpt the right amount of words, and that's that's just you know I just and which to me has nothing to do with dyslexia. It's just puzzle solving. Yes, but dyslexics like solving puzzles. Well, yeah. So I, don't, <laughs> I yeah yes. I mean, yes. I guess I guess I'm I, I'm I'm really. I guess I, yeah, I only think that the sex is like what I've been told or yeah. what, how I've been labelled is like, well, you can't spell. That's, that's like, that's where I, a lot uh, of the people I talk to, that, that's where they, that's where it starts and stops. 
Yes, no, the creative problem solver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another thing Levy to get with it. So being you've applied that to working with wordplay and lyrics to make that work. Like what is the, this is challenging. How do I get this all to come together? Uh, it's really interesting yeah. hearing how your brain is not so worried about the language of it, but more the cleverness of how I can make it all dance around and particularly with the lyric, right? As you mentioned, having a vocal melody has got to fit, it's got to make sense within the song and roll through. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. That's quite yeah. A, a tricky thing to get right. Yeah, but it, uh, I guess it's just the end goal is it just becomes so satisfying. I, I, I know the girls I write with, we just, when we could be there for half an hour working mm. on three words. <laughs> and, it's, and when we get it right, we go, oh my God! Because <laughs> like, ah, yeah. there was no other way of doing it. That, that was the perfect solution. And that's really, well, for us, do it satisfying. I'm for other people, it's probably nothing, but <laughs> oh, they, would have come up, they would have come up with it in seconds. But yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really quite satisfying. And I just, yeah, I just do love, uh, I do love our language. And I'm saying it's probably the same for every language. Yeah, um, I don't know for sure, but no, I've no sounds idea. Like a reasonable I, assumption. <laughs> yes, I don't know how hard it is to write a song in German. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting palette of words to start with, isn't it? <laughs> so, I, I wanted to come back to circle back to you. you. Said your dad was on the board of direction of the Dorset Dyslexia Association. Yes, but he didn't. He hadn't noticed any dyslexia in yourself. How, no. how do you feel that? Well, I guess that's the 18-year gap between him, uh, between me and my half-sister. Right, I see. Uh, with his second marriage. Okay. Um, so, um, and I, again, I'm guessing that in 1974, mm -hmm. it, when, yeah, when I was nine, yeah. um, it, I, again, you, you'll know the history. I don't know the history, but uh, how prevalent uh, or uh, were teachers trained to spot dyslexia in 1974? No, it's, a, it's more what I was thinking really is I've had previous guests on who basically they find out they're dyslexic because their children get recognized oh. as being dyslexic and they suddenly realize the patterns in with them. So mm. thinking with your dad's on the Dyslexia Association, sees it with your half sister. Yeah, and then like whether you, I thought maybe earlier on when I read that that actually you might start watching the same patterns yourself, but clearly it's just something you come out with. Well, I, I mean, stand I, didn't, alone. I didn't talk. Um, and it's not in a bad way. I mean, because I left home. So <laughs> when I was when I was left home at eight, uh, left home at nineteen. Right. Yeah, uh, my yeah. my half sister was two. Ah, okay. Okay, yes. so I got I on see. bang. Right, yeah. so um, so uh, I, I can't see that there was... So I'm guessing Dad wouldn't have known... Would, certainly wouldn't mean... I, I'm guessing he wouldn't have been told by his, by the teachers. Although actually something did crop up, which I'll... Um, see, it's now crossing my mind now I speak to you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all unravelling now. Yeah, yeah. I'll be crying in a minute if you don't stop. Um, uh <laughs> So the one thing that did, yeah. So um, yeah, come let's answer your initial question. So yeah, the teachers wouldn't have told Dan at, at, at um, parent evening that that um, they're worried that Jason might have dyslexia. That clearly didn't happen. What would have happened is that Jason's English isn't very good. Yes. I mean, we know that because I have don't have an English O level. Mm -hmm. yeah. Couldn't do it. Now you yeah. think that would stop me? That would stop me in my tracks in terms of further mm. education. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily, my art, and I'm trying not to be arrogant here, <laughs> my art was clearly good enough to, you, know, you have to have maths and English to go to uni. Yes, well, I, did, yeah. I didn't. Um, you had to have three O levels, three O levels to get to uni. I only had one. Um, I didn't, I failed physics. I dropped out of business studies and I only had our O level, A level, but that got me, got me uni. I didn't have English. Um, so, so we know we, I was bad at English. We don't, in those days, we didn't know why. Yes, we, yes. Yeah. We'd, I, do, I was just, I, I just, I was on the, you know, I mean, sorry to say this in front of your audience, but I was on the thick table mm. um, and I couldn't spell and I couldn't write and it was terrible. Um, so, 
I guess my dad didn't. So 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 when uh, um, my Eloise went to school again, I don't know really the history. All I do know is that the family knows that Eloise is eccentric, and we know that because of that, that really. Um, got my dad interested in that, and um, and then he took up the role uh, of being on the board of Dorset. So he, I, he, I know he then didn't go. Ah, maybe Jason was this. I, I, we never had that conversation. And by the time my sister was in that system and was diagnosed when she was like eight, nine, ten, um, I was thirty and in Bristol, away from my family, and we never spoke about it. Yes, the dots just, the age gap is what really stops yeah. all the dots getting connected. Yes. yes. Yeah, that makes yes. sense, actually. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, so that, I, I, I'm seeing that's what happened. So, yeah, I'm, uh, but yes, that thing I just mentioned that you have, I, what my dad and mo- I think more so my stepmom because my dad was working, she did organize extra English after school for me. Oh, okay. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I remember about it is that I was that I was reminded, and I'm sorry if Jan's listening, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't and, and I don't mean this don't mean this badly at all. I'm just I'm just recollecting, and I apologize, <laughs> and I will apologize now. I remember <laughs> being told that I was being ungrateful uh, for having those uh, uh, after school English lessons. Well, I think my teacher was called Diane, if I remember rightly. And I, I, I guess I, I, I'm, I can't remember. It's such a long time ago, but I guess I must have resented it. Um, I think what I'm resenting is that I still found it difficult. Yes, yes. Uh, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually thinking about that as we speak. Mm, mm. So um, it could very well be rebelling because it's difficult, and what yeah. they're teaching you it because they don't know. They don't know what the problem is, so no. speak, per se, but um, no. you're still being taught a method that doesn't work for you. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, and I'm, that's what I'm realising right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> live on it. <laughs> you live on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, and what I, what I do know is what m- my biggest problem um, is my comprehension. Mm, okay. Um, and this is why I've 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 only only started. I would say about five years ago, I started being able to read books. Mm-hmm. Um, because um, the 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 that's the same with my same with my wife Mandy. And again, another visually led person. We we met at Poly, so we we met at the same graphic design course. Ah, yes. Um, yes. Uh, that well tried and tested method of meeting your wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> you were saying yes as if you were you 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 were knowingly you may have had experience with that. No, uh, no, I went to uni uh, in my late twenties. So everybody at my university was quite a bit younger than I was. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> right. Okay, a mature student. So that's, that's not how I met my mum. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, I've lost my thread there. Yes, but comprehension. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was, and again, it, uh, is this another wiring fault in my, in my head is <laughs> that is, is retaining the information. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 but particularly in fiction. So I could never retain a story from one page to the next. And I've spoken to many people and, and they, they have a, they've had a similar thing. They think, oh, I can't read books. And it's like you turn one page and you're going, who's Dave? It's like, <laughs> well, he was introduced on the last page. Mm. You go, yeah, I, I don't know who he is. And, and, and so the comprehension and, and the amount of comprehensions test you have it in English at O level is quite ridiculous. Yes. Um, so it's like, I can't, I can't, comp- yeah, it's weird because yeah, I, can, I can comprehend the things, <laughs> but I can't remember a storyline when it's in words. Yes. Now, yes. a film or a comic, <laughs> yes. <laughs> or an audio book? Well, I certainly listen to a lot of podcasts now. I, don't, I haven't listened to um, 
audiobooks. I know a lot of people do, certainly in their cars, but I haven't got a CD player in my car, so I must have got to try and hook my phone up. But yeah, so I listen to podcasts because I tend to work at the computer. Um, yeah, yeah. When I, if, if it's not, if it's not, if there's nothing too taxing on my brain, I can do some work and listen to a podcast at the same time. If yeah, I have yeah. to creatively think, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah um, but if I'm doing some, <laughs> some manual, just coloring something up or doing a drawing, then I can I can listen to a podcast at the same time. Yeah, so it was that. It, yeah. So, so these things are slowly building up and going, ah, yeah, right, I can't do that. Oh, that's weird when that looks and suddenly I can't spell it and suddenly I can. Suddenly that says vaccines. Next minute it says vac- it says vacancies or there's a, there's, a, there's a tea in the middle of meal and it says metal and it's, then it says meal. Um, I can't comprehend stuff. Yeah, it, it, these all, it all slowly goes, right, ah, that's what's wrong with me. Or, I'll, I'll, and I'll put that in air quotes for the people listening. Because <laughs> um, uh, then you go, well, actually, you look it up and you go, look at all the people who are dyslexic, you know, the famous mm-hmm. you know, Einsteins and Bransons of, of the world. And you go, oh, that's fair enough. I don't mind, yeah. I don't mind being in that club. <laughs> that's good company to be in. <laughs> it's good company to be in. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I think, I, and, and now I do think that my profession works so much better because of my the way my brain's wired up. Yes, that brings me nicely to your profession oh, okay. and brand builders. Um, so, obviously, in 1996, you, you started your company, The Flint, yeah. which focused on building brands, which yeah. I imagine brands are important in 96, but they're getting even more and more important in the modern times, would you think? Or it seems like that to me on social media anyway. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess it. De- um, it I guess it depends on what anybody f- describes or has an idea of what the, what brand means to them. Mm-hmm. There's a whole whole chapter in my book about you know what is a brand, and you ask 15 people, and I'll give you 15 different answers. Well, they'll mainly say the logo, yes. which, is, which is the biggest wrong answer you could get. Um, so yeah, so people, so people say yeah, if they know I'm doing, if I'm, yeah, if I go to a network event or something, and they go, uh, and they know I'm the brand guy, they go, oh, do I have a look at my brand? And they show me their business card, and they show me their logo, hmm. and and then I, I, I mass, yeah, you know, I go, well, that's really nice, uh, but uh, but what does your business stand for? What's what's your promise to your customer? Um, what's your value? What's your va- what's your values? Because that's what the brand is. Your logo is something to help a customer remind you of the experience of the brand. So, yes, so yes brands. Uh, but then again, you know, Sainsbury's will say they will brand match your detergent for, for Asda's. You go, well, that's got nothing to do with what I've just said. No, but no. some people will say that, say a box of detergent is, 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 a, is a cheaper brand. Mm. Well, well, that, well, then therefore you mean a brand is a product then. Um, but then you'll go, well, okay, um, uh, David Beckham is a brand, mm. especially when he starts selling whatever he sells, <laughs> aftershave or something. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know what Ivy sells. That, yeah, again, that, the, the trouble with celebrity branding is that they'll, they'll, they'll put their name to 20 different brands and you go, well, that's completely diluted. I can't believe you then. If, if, if you're saying this, this product's great, but so these other 19 products, well, then yes. you, yes. you've, you've diluted everything you just said. So that's a load of rubbish. That's just, you're just trying to get, make as much money as possible. But, that, but in that case, so a, so a personality is a brand. And so it goes on. So these days, so many things can be misconstrued as a brand when mm. people actually mean a product or a person and a company, uh, and so it goes on. So, brand is. It, it, I think the word brand is banded about a lot more. I don't feel that it's any more important than it's ever been, because the whole i the, the whole. But I do think companies need to be far more. Uh, they they need to demonstrate what they stand for a lot more. I don't think you can get away with what you used to be able to get away with as a company anymore. I think right. the, I think the, I think the consumers are going, you know, because of the internet, because of social media, because of access to information. And again, I mean, I try not to be too political here, 
but like even the past two years, the governments don't seem to realize there's a thing called the internet where you can find things out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They'll say something and you just quickly, well, that's clearly not true. Whereas you couldn't do that before 20 years ago. No, definitely not. So companies could say what they want. Um, and that's why we had to bring in things like advertising standards. As like, you know, you say, like, yeah, back in the days when doctors were um, saying how good uh, you know cigarettes were for you, um, <laughs> in advertising terms, um, yeah. so like you just you just can't do things like that anymore. No. So the, the whole movement with um, the, the green movement, sustainability, and all that sort of stuff, you can say these things, but now. If that's your actual, if your brand is, and, and what I mean by that, so if this company stands for these things, these values, or this promise to your customer, um, then you really have to demonstrate it. Uh, the great, the great thing that's just happened on the on the International Women's Day, where the company was, um, you get a company saying, oh, "We support Women's International Day," and they quickly did a, um, a research on the pay gap of that company. Um, and, and, and posted it straight as soon as someone put a poster about trying to pretend they're they're interested in women, and they quickly did a did a quick search on them saying, "But how so? How come your pay gap's twenty three percent?" So you can't you can't you can't lie anymore. You can't lie as easily. So that's that's all I think. Hopefully, is is shifting um, the whole the whole idea of branding. Is it? We we have to be more authentic about what we're selling, and and we have to demonstrate it on a daily basis, which is kind of what I talk to my clients at a much smaller scale. Um, yeah. So like, yeah. Okay, if you say you're going to do this, especially with strapline, the strapline is really the uh, in in essence it, it is is the most visual um, promise that you're going to get. So. If you say something like Jeanette says, it's the best a man can get, is it? Because if it's not, then you're off brand. It's, yes. qu- it's, it's quite easy to stay on brand. You just yes. you just got to you just got to keep keeping your promise. Um, now the most the most visual is that is your strapline. Now, um, so you just got to demonstrate that. So if you start spouting these these promises, bigger promises about pay gaps and uh, uh, and about sustainability and your green credentials and all that sort of thing, then just demonstrate it, and and then your customers will stick with you, mm. um, and and they will they will buy into not just from you. Anyone can, anyone can buy from you usually if you're cheap enough and the products. It's it's a very generic thing, and you just need a you know, bar of soap or whatever, <laughs> yeah. or a toilet a toilet roll. As long as you're cheap enough, I'll buy it. <laughs> if especially with brands, the brands are supposed to be a bit more expensive than the generic. Um, yes, yeah. After. So so why are you more expensive? And why do you want me to to buy from you? Well, you, I don't I don't want you to buy from me. I want you to buy into me. And that's the difference between, say, growing a business and building a brand. I got to, I got to get my customers to buy into what I'm doing uh, and my philosophies, and my beliefs, and how I treat my customers. Um, so if you if you do, if you need to do a bit more about that, then you have to charge a bit more because you've got a lot more things to sort out, and you got you got to really have a really good customer service. So therefore, you've really got to train your employees. And so it, that that will take more money to to have that kind of get build that environment, build that culture, uh, and then keep your employees because they got to buy into the same philosophy as well, mm. and you got to treat them nicely. So that all costs money. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, and um, so if but if you're willing to pay for that, and you're willing to pay because you you you're you're not going to get let down, and you share the beliefs, and that company's authentic, then yeah, that side of branding I think is what's important now, as opposed to it might not have been as important because you could get away with a bit less, or you can get away with a bit more, thirty forty years ago. And how did you? shift from doing graphic design on early computers into focusing more on branding than just being a logo and a designer really well that was it was interesting um what it was it was a few years into it i would say about 
was trying to think. Yeah, about 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 seven, eight years into the into the graphic design side of things when I started. I mean, there's a whole other thing I was doing. I was doing music at the same time, but we'd have to talk about that. The interface between doing the work and and uh, the customer, it's certainly banging out a logo. Or, I mean, in those days, it was banging out a logo or even a leaflet or a, you know, a business card. It was very kind of low-key stuff. So you do it, you do the work, you'd assume that the, cu- the customer liked it because you got paid a month later. <laughs> and it wasn't, there wasn't too much interaction. I think in most yeah. businesses, you only hear from the customer when it's gone wrong. Uh, potentially, yes. <laughs> really. Um because uh, you know, if you're doing your job, that's that's what they're paying for. You don't expect anything more praise. Wow, you actually did your job. That's fantastic, <laughs> isn't it? That's 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 the entry level. Just that's do the your job. Yeah, um, yeah. And and we'll pay you. Um, that wasn't particularly fulfilling. Uh, I found after mm. a certain period of time, and there's also a point at which the customers were. Uh, kind of disagreeing with some of my advice, um, which doesn't stop. I mean, I'm not saying it's any better now. Or it was, <laughs> no, it's certainly not. It's certainly not worse. But you, you say, well, hang on, I, I kind of know. I, it was five, seven years in the business, and so maybe I didn't. I wasn't asked that. I've, I've been nine years employed. I was a creative director uh, uh, for nine years, so um, I kind of knew what I was doing. I'd already had nine years before I started my own business. Um, yeah. So, you, yeah, I've got some experience. I kind of know what I'm doing. So, please, as you're paying for my advice, do you want to, you should really take it. Um, but I, I don't know. It, 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 was, it, was a, it was a funny period of time. Maybe it was mid, mid, well, wasn't midlife crisis. It was more like, was I, yeah, I, I had my kid by then, uh, Dan. So, yeah, it was about 2004, 2005, something like that. So, what I, so what I decided to do, is um, uh, become an, an African drum facilitator, um, and do <laughs> as you do, as you yeah. as one does, <laughs> Matthew. Yeah. Um, I thought I, I'm I'm not getting literally. I'm not getting what I want out of this life, uh, being spirit spiritually fulfilled I'm, I'm not being that ma- massively creatively fulfilled um so as a hobby i mean also kept the business going but i met i met someone and we we started up a part-time business when i could so on weekends and nights basically team building corporate team builds icebreakers um with african djembes so uh and up to you know, I, 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 quite good because we we we, we we, uh, I think the biggest one we did was about 500, so about 500 people. All, we gave them all a drum. Um, we had that many drums. Uh, and we did a breaker for uh, Sky TV in Edinburgh. Um, that was one of my biggest gigs. And we did loads of festivals. And what was fantastic about that was the immediate human interaction. Uh, and, and the fact that I would do something with a drum... Well, I, probably not me, actually. As a facilitator, you stand in the middle of a circle. They're called drum, community drum circles. So you right. have a whole... Uh, I'm describing this, and, and of course, the audience can't see what I'm doing. You draw so, your circle. <laughs> so there's a, whole, there's a whole bunch of people in a circle, and there's one person in the middle who will then facilitate. Now, we teach... We, I'd, I'd, I'd facilitate, and, and all it is is starting off a very simple rhythm on one side of this circle, and then start another rhythm on the other side of the circle and get the two sides interacting with each other. Um, very simple, ba, 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 and ba, ba, ba. So they just, just uh, and maybe something else, ba, 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 ba. So they, they, they call and respond, is what, what it's called in our, in our language. Um, and and then, then do it in quarters, so there's four things going on, et cetera, et cetera. So what, and, and you do simple commands, like saying, get louder, Get quieter. It's quite easy stuff. So then we get someone, and then we pick on spot pick. We we we'd worked out by then who who was really enthusiastic and who's who, who's not. And then say, do you want to go? And get them in the middle, and they would. It just learn what we did. Very simple, and they do it. And just if you're in the middle of a circle with 300 drums, it really is really quite energetic, yeah, and it's quite imagine. very powerful. Um, uh, uh, and just all those frequencies and that, that energy and that the amount of air that's moving is fantastic. Um, there's one thing with 
drumming um, called Entrain not called Entrainment, um, which is a natural phenomenon, and and you can see it on um, on on YouTube where they put out of sync metronomes, mm. and then eventually all the metronomes yeah. eventually follow each other. Yes, yeah, seen that. Well, that is a natural phenomenon called entrainment, and it's all to do with frequencies just pushing off each other. And so, any so enough people in a drum circle will drum brilliantly, and you hand you basically you hand that power over to them, saying, "Look how fantastic you lot are at drumming, and you've never drummed in your lives." Especially when we eventually get six different rhythms going, and they're going, "I can't believe I'm doing this." So usually, with that, we would go, "So what else do you think you can do in your life that you didn't think you could do?" So that, I mean, that's kind of why we brought in so is, is, to, is to get those communication skills, the leadership skills going, and the creative skills going. That was the the team building side of it, and and that. So I got my spiritual investment on there. I got my creative spirit investment. I got my immediate human contact, which I love, and I thought, well, that's so much better than graphic design. So, but, <laughs> but, and it, it 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 kind of it kind of paid a few bills, but so I I lost that. I mean, I mean, basically, I said, we, I, I agree. We did that for five years. And I sort of said, right, okay, it's time for split up. My, my, the business partner at the time wanted to go push it in a different direction. I said, I'll go back to graphic design, but I won't. I said, I need, I need to offer a lot more than knocking out a leaflet. So since 90, yeah, since 96 or even before that, there's a very, for me, there's a very different pathway between graphic design and and brand strategies and brand development. So it seems, and I'm, I'm not trying to be hurtful here, but a graphic, as I found out, a graphic designer basically was there to artwork the client's idea, whereas a branding person is like, "This is what you're going to do, client, because I know best. I'm not taking any nonsense." <laughs> um, and I'd yeah, so within that I go, okay, well, I'm gonna I can offer you so much more value. Um, so yeah, you know, so now I can now I will name your company and I'll do all the research that is needed for that. Not only will I do that, I will um I eventually um I can now guarantee that that name, logo, or strap line will get a trademark if you um applied for one, because we now have a hundred percent track record of that because we know what we're doing. So, so that's offering the client a huge amount more value and a demonstrated experience a way of doing that. I, I can prove that that you will get you will get a trademark. Um, that's one of our USBs. Uh, you come up against anybody else, especially likes of if you're trying to find a logo online, they can't. No one can offer that. And and, and therefore sitting down with them and, and then okay, so how am I going to interact with these? customers a lot more. So I then start talking to their employees and get that real good face-to-face -face interaction with their employees. So I say, talk to the directors and they go, okay, this is what your vision is. This is where you want the company to go. Okay, this is what your values are. Right, can I just go and find out if, the, if, the, if your employees know any of that? Because I don't think they do. <laughs> so let's chat to them as well. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah. let's interview them. Let's go. Let's yeah. put them through a few processes. I've got, I kind of, I've got my own um, process to find out people's values. Let's see if they match up with with the leaders, um, and then talk about what how you're going how you're going to demonstrate these values. <clears throat> um, and as we we were mentioning earlier. Definitely, what are your actions going to be? What is your promise to your customer? How are you going to demonstrate that promise on a daily basis? How are you going to do that for your marketing? So, yeah, we're just offering a load more value, load more experience, load more guidance. And for me, a lot more interaction with all the employees, which I really love, uh, especially in the retail uh, high street side of, 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 of the markets. Um, I really love doing that. Um, because it's so the interaction between an employee and a customer over you know getting a coffee <laughs> is so crucial to get right. Um, yes. That, yeah. So that's that's yeah. what really you sort of. So I really worked out how to just immerse myself a bit more in a business, helping a more, helping a business, especially in Bristol. Um, we do keep very small and you know, just help small businesses and startups. So I just got a lot more out of it, and it's a lot more fulfilling. Occasionally, a client would tell me what to do, and uh, we kind of say, "Well, we're—I don't think we're the agency for you." <laughs> no, no, and it—I'm not mentioning 
as you've mentioned before, with the creative side and all the, the trying to problem solve for wordplay and all that comes together. And now you're almost problem solving how to create brands for people, aren't you? Where you're dealing with talking to the employees, understanding the customer interactions and even getting everything aligned. Yeah. I mean, no, yeah. I mean, no business owner. owner should should be able to know any of this. Um, most most businesses I come in contact with get to us or get referred to us when they're about five years down the line. Not very often we do startups because there's there's ten, there's sticking blocks with money and stuff like that. But sometimes people will start up a new business having been in business, so they're okay. Um, but yeah, they've they've mm. they you know most a lot of business owners we work with have, have got an idea, they're passionate about it, they do it. Uh, and then, then they realise they then have to be the accountant and the bookkeeper and the HR director and all this. And it's like they just get sort of deflated by all these other things that that takes them away from the very reason they started the business. And why should they know about any of that? And they could, and they really don't know about what a branding strategy is. Uh, that's a, I don't think people ever get taught about that. You kind of know what a business plan is. And you kind of know what marketing is. It's like doing is that like doing a leaflet or something, or putting up a putting a post on social media. But when you say what, what's the first what's the first three things you should do when you're developing a brand strategy, people, I've I've never had an answer the correct answer yet in the twenty odd years I've done it because um, they just don't know. And they will say uh, <laughs> a logo. Yeah. Yes, I was just yeah. say logo given to my head. Yeah. Like, logo, 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 scheme. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. color scheme, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, and they're going, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. no, <laughs> let's let's sit down and 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 no, yeah, of course you should. You, there's no reason why you should know that. But this is this is yeah. So solving all that, but it's, it's more like okay, if that's what you want for this business, and that's what you. That's yeah. That's why you. That's why you're in business. That's what's motivated you to do this sort of thing. Um, let me just work out the best way to make you make your business successful. In my way, obviously, there are other other things that make businesses successful. It's not just a good logo. There is plenty of other things. There's plenty of reasons why of course, a business yes. goes down. It's not yeah, because yeah. of not bad branding, a bad logo. Um, yeah, there's many other reasons. But in the in the way I can help. Um, and it's, I was asked this today it's, at the, at the uh, talk at college. It's what do you, they go, well, what do you, what, what do you do? And it's like saying, well, I do branding because that doesn't help anybody. <laughs> so, uh, my, my, my main yeah. job is to create loyal <laughs> customers. That's my main job. Uh, um, because yeah. um, if you haven't got loyal customers and they're just going to come to you because you're, they would just go anywhere because for the cheapest. I got to create them. So why? It's, mm. it's that's the task. Got to find the right customers. Yes. Got to make sure that they're loyal to you and that they then tell their friends how good you are. Now they can only do that if you are good. <laughs> and then the other the other really the other thing is to is to so that's that's more like the the underlying strategy is how do we create that loyalty? And it's not because of your name. No one no one goes to a company just because of the name. Uh, or they don't. They don't not go because of the name. Um, they go for many other things, um, but also on 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 the visual side of things, the, the brand identity. Um, we do have to create a name, a logo, and a strap line that will be absolutely distinguished from the competition, and that is quite hard. But that's that's, that's our job, that's, and that's what we can guarantee. And we can we can um, get a trademark and protect you. Um, from people who are then trying to scam off you and trying to do a similar name with similar color scheme, um, and then try and trade off your goodwill. Yeah, well, we're we'll come up with an identity that's so unique that we can trademark it and then tell them to stop trading. Yeah, Inter- interesting. A lot of dynamic thinking coming into play there, isn't it? Trying to navigate all that space and understand what the brief is, what the customer wants. What they think they want versus what they yeah yeah want and need is very different. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> bang on, bang on. Yeah, lots of good dyslexia traits coming in there. I think. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I the big the, the biggest thing for me is 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 the di- the I, I try and sort of say that I I mean the customers come to you and say they they, they we need we really want to think differently about this. We want to think outside the box. In my I go really because because your outside the box is very different from mine. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, it's quite funny. It's always quite funny when, when they say that. So I, I, I come up with things from outside the box and they go, ooh, we didn't mean that far side out the side of the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's like, welcome to my life where I've spent no time oh, well, in okay, the box. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's kind of that thing, isn't it? Where like, they're like, let's think inside, outside the yeah, box. You're like, like, well, I've never been in the box. Tonight. Outside the box, that's <laughs> my starting point. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, why, point, why, yes, I would, why yes, would I yeah. start inside a box? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I just wouldn't do that. Yeah, so there's yeah. lots of, yeah. The well, I mean, good, now you've you've kind of, you know, tapped into a few things that, I've, that we said. There's the, 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 pu- the puzzle solving things. It's the... um. There's, there's three. There's three ways I've, that um, I, I people with brains wide like mine um, think <laughs> is is um, well. A we got to think differently, and we get that. Um, but uh, yeah. the next thing yeah. we got to think divergently, mm-hmm. but then associatively, and then finally convergently. So, so I, I would say all those three things right. cover the word different. So yeah, so I, I got to think divergently first, mm-hmm. then then associatively, uh, and then then at the very last minute, which is like could be days later, could be a week later, is start convergently. Whereas most people will go, oh, I've got an idea. No, that's bad. You go, whoa, 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 whoa. Can we just explore that idea for like three days? Yes. And they're going, no, that's the wrong, that's yes. the wrong answer. Yes. They go, no, 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 no. That's not how my brain works. I'll, I'll have an idea and 20 mm. others. That's the divergent mm-hmm. thing. Okay. And then, right, what's what, what can we associate? And this is where that wordplay thing is. Okay, so we have the word, that word, whatever that word is. Now, what other words are in the same semantic field as that word? What, what can we associate with that word? Other than the, you know, I know we're designing an estate agent's logo, <laughs> and all you can think of is a house for a logo, but I can't do that. <laughs> a, because if I come up with a logo yeah. that's a house, I can't protect that by trademark because all your competition have houses for logos. Because mm-hmm. to people who don't think like I do, because that's my job, to think that that's what you'll come up with. So I can't do that professionally. I can't. I wouldn't be doing my job if I give you the same logo as somebody else. I have to think of yes, something else. Yes, yes. And I can't do it like that. Yeah. I got to think. Right, house. Go, and you go. Uh, uh, door, uh, window, uh, welcome mat, chimney, um, garden, uh, garden, uh, and, and you go on. And then you go right. Then every single one of those yes, words, yeah. you go. Okay, garden. Now what? Uh, plants. Uh, dirt, leaves, tree, garden swing, um, a, a, a paddling pool, um, a lovely summer um, uh, with with birds tweeting, uh, and you and you just more and more. Okay, go further. What else can you associate? Well, birds tweeting. Uh, uh, um, I don't know uh, worms. Uh, and you just keep going. Um, but but yes, the yes. clock can't go on. No, it's, it needs to be a house. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going, no, 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 a worm, a worm's good. <laughs> yes, yes. When you said a house and estate agent, I instantly thought of a famous estate agent brand. Well, let, okay, there's, there's, a house go, like there's a good one, in, <laughs> but there's one in Bristol called estate. Elephant. Yeah, and it's like, uh, interesting. and what, and what's, what the, it does, and, and the weird <laughs> thing is, they're quite they're successful, and the weird thing is, is that, who cares? No one cares, and, that, and that's the biggest. That's the biggest stumbling block that we have with customers. He'll come up with a name or a logo, especially a name. Um, and again, our job is to come up with an original name. And when I mean original, like a word that has never ever been uttered or written in history. <laughs> now, parts of those words might be so, like Netflix was never uttered until Netflix came up with the word Netflix. Now, the word net, yes, and the word yes. flicks, yes. <laughs> but the fact that you've yes. got... Yes, yes. Yeah, they could have been called Cineweb. It's the same thing. Yes. No, but you don't know that because you're just used to Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> so, you know, and you say to your customer, are you happy with the word Netflix? Yes. 
Were you happy the day you heard it? Yes? Okay. So when I give you original name, why are you scared to death of it? It's because you've never heard of it. And people, uh, most people, uh, don't rec- well, are uncomfortable with, with originality because they've never seen it. And, and then I demonstrate, they go, well, were you happy with Netflix or Pinterest or Groupon or Microsoft or you know, all these made up words? And they're going, yeah. I mean, well, you've just answered your own question then. It's going to be fine. <laughs> Are you happy buying a house from Elephant? It's fine. Are well, people in Bristol are happy buying, Elef- buying a house from Elephant? It doesn't matter. As long as that company does what they say they're going to do, um, they've demonstrated their difference, and they don't let you down, and now you've got a name that's going to distinguish them from everybody else that you're going to remember, we've done our job. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I didn't. We didn't come up with elephant. That's somebody mm. else. Um, but no, no. So, okay. um, but that's <laughs> that's that's the point. People are just terrified of originality. And that's the way I say. You know, my my outside of the box is very very different from yours. Yours is just lifting the lid up a little. Oh, I'm putting it down again. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I think that gets me to um, starting to round out this podcast. Now, at the end of each podcast, I ask three rapid fire questions. They don't need quick answers from you. They're just quick questions from me. Yes. So the first one is, what prejudice do you have about dyslexia that's been proven wrong? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing the, the prejudice that I was familiar with, I didn't, didn't put on myself, the prejudice would be that there's something wrong with you and it's not, and it's not right. What I've, I haven't even taught myself. I'm going, thank God I'm dyslexic. Because there's no way I could do my job if my brain was wired differently than it is now. So I'm going, oh, that's, I mean, I, I couldn't, with that thinking differently thing, because I can, I can jumble things up quickly um, and, and go off at a tangent really, really quickly. And I can associatively think and divergently think really quickly. It's like, thank God, because I wouldn't be able to do my job. So yeah, so, so I hope that answers the question. Yeah, no. Any answers valid for that? It's it's, it's your your answer to have, and uh, but now it's a really interesting answer. Nicely ties together some of the stuff we spoke about during the episode. Okay, my second question is: If an alien came down, how would you describe dyslexia to them? Right. <laughs> uh, we are presuming they can speak English. Uh, <laughs> some yeah, sort of <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. They'd have to want, but yeah. So I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to deflect that because my brain is now going, well, I'd have to assume they understand that concept because <laughs> <laughs> they might not even, they might not even have language. I, so, yeah. So I've watched mm, too many sci fi films. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm on the, uh, the uh, old school alien that somehow is able to communicate with you via English kind of alien. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm deflecting the question and being going too deep. How would I, how, how would I, I can, only just, I can only describe it as if you show me some words, if you show me your language, when you read your language, sometimes that language could read differently with every second. Yeah, I mean, I, that's the only way I can describe what I see could be very different to someone else. But I, but I will see words um, and every now and then they, they will come alive and quickly swap. So it's, so the, the, the page in front of you will just become alive and, and decide, decide it's, it's something else. Yes, yes. Uh, that's that's a good description, I think. Yes. <laughs> the final question is podcast. And seeing as this is the Dyslexia Life Hack show, what is your favorite Dyslexia Life Hack? Oh, spell check. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess spell check. And um, yeah, I, I guess early on, it's just like, sorry. sorry. I didn't, yeah, so I didn't, ca- <laughs> I, I didn't catch that. I must have read yeah. it too quickly or it didn't sink in or. Yeah, or I would just blame. I say, yeah, it's well known that that I that, I, that my comprehension is bad. So yeah, I, I didn't catch that. But mm. yeah, these days it's just it's it, well, it's, well professionally, we have to we have to proofread each other's work. 
Yes. I mean, this is the whole reason you got in contact with really, wasn't it? Yes. On that post, it's like, yeah, yeah. The, the Apprentice post. It's like, how on earth could they have spelled Arctic wrong? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Why is three or four people in one team, like one or two missing it, but everybody? Come on. Yeah, well, no, and, that's, <laughs> and it's the same as the same as happened this, this, this week as well. I've done another post about the, um, the uh, first-time foodies. Yes, yeah. Uh, it's some, I can't watch The Apprentice because it's painful because oh, I can't work out why these people... Just don't see it. Well, because it's because it's an entertainment program and the production company's in charge of it. So, right, I, so right. someone someone said they knew the people in the production company, and it's like it's so more rigged than you'd think. Wow, uh, <laughs> it's an entertainment program, and people like people people like seeing people become being idiots. Um, so it's really unfair. <laughs> it, it is. It's really unfair. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah, un- yeah. It is slightly unfair. So um, yeah. So that's that's usually um, yeah. But these days, the, the the professional hack is right. Someone else in the team has to proofread everything I've written, even when I, even after I spell checked it because I spell check it, but spell check doesn't pick up uh, homonyms. Um, so yeah, because the word well uh, of instead of off or whatever. It's like well, spell check says well they're both spelled right, so they're not going to pick up a lot of stuff. Yeah, we have to yes. so professionally we have to proofread it. But my my hack, yeah. actually my hack is like my wife. Just you you read it because you know damn well I'm not going to do it properly. So oh, yeah, so I, I kind of own it. It's like yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I've, I, I can do other things. You don't have to be great at everything. Uh, yes, yeah, it, that that is important, isn't it? That you're strong at some things, weaker at others. Yeah. And actually, you surround yourself with a network that helps. You help them with their weak points, and they help you with yeah. yours, and we all build better things. Yeah, we just yeah, just do just lean into what you're good at. And don't don't yeah. beat yourself up just because you can't do something. It's like it's, it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Okay. Um, before we sign off, is there anything else you'd like to add? Oh. Um, hint. Shamelessly promote your book. Oh, shamelessly promote my book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, I'm really bad at. I, I advise other people how to market themselves, but I'm not really good at doing it myself. Um, uh, well, uh, the, the, the two things. Yes. Okay. Um, well, funny you should mention Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> um, as, as well, you did mention earlier on. I in the intro, I do have a book. So there is a book out called From mm-hmm. Brand to Brand, which you can buy on uh, any Amazon website. Uh, and you can get on Kindle as well. Um, but that is that was a combination of me well, going, there has to be a way of affordably creating decent brands and not having all these mistakes being made. So mm-hmm. rather than me charging you five grand, just get a book for a tenner. It really, mm-hmm. th- that's, that's about the cheapest branding strategy I can develop. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, yeah. so yeah. So, just type in "from bland to bland" by Jason Flinter, um, and have a look at that. But the other thing is, yeah, don't. Um, the other tip is, yeah, don't beat yourself up. Yeah, you're great at loads of things, so you can't mm. spell. <sighs> Whatever. Yeah. Well, uh, I want to thank you, Jason, for taking the time to come on and talk to me today. It's been quite good fun, actually. Really interesting. I'm really surprising where it went actually. At points, wasn't it? What? Okay. <laughs> oh yes. Well, you tapped into a few things I didn't even realize. So, so, yeah. so thank well, you for that. I'm gonna, cool. I wish I could cool. talk to my dad. He's not with us anymore. But um, oh. I could go back to him saying, "Oi." <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody else for taking the time to listen, and I will catch you not in the next episode. Goodbye for now. Thanks very much. <laughs>